I think he's asleep. That's the Soviet player. And while he's asleep, my friends, let me show you a couple of things as the German player. It's the middle of the Soviet turn on uh, the 22nd of November. And it, it's very difficult sometimes to, uh, as a solo player, to split and not look at the map from the context of one side or the other while you're playing the other side. So uh, it's difficult to not look at the map while you're playing one side in the context of the other. That's what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> so here's what I was thinking. As, uh, as I'm handling uh, the turn for the, the Soviets, the Soviets have uh, pretty much reacted very as, as aggressively as they can given the circumstances and the units they have to try and uh, put a, a, a road bump in the way, number one, and then number two, start building a line along here, along the Oka River, to protect the southern flank of Moscow. Because this breakthrough that happened here, this one hex breakthrough, and uh, it's caused all sorts of mayhem. It's thinned out this line here pretty nicely and done all sorts of cool things. What it's also done, though, is uh, the Soviet player has started pulling, well, we're starting to pull back here anyway, and then uh, uh, you know, as these guys were pulling back, let me get these guys because it's easy to point. I see these are the tweezers. You think these are my tweezers? They're not really. They're a spare pair. They're actually my wives. I stole them because I really needed a pair. And that's when the joke uh, came up. That's when I thought about doing that video. That was, I thought, funny. Anyway, so we got these guys here and uh, they're starting to come back. So they're starting to move back. Well, as they're moving back, they're, they're, uh, they're, some of them are abandoning uh, these hedgehog positions and I'm starting to peel units out as a Soviet player and try and rail them back over to the southern side of the map because that's where there's problems, right? And uh, it's, it's leaving little gaps and little holes and so I'm trying to fill them all in. Look, there's a little 3-2-10. That's not going to last very long. This 6-2-5, even though it's behind the river, which is frozen, well, it's not going to last very long. So it's starting to present opportunities uh, over here on the uh, western front of Moscow. That's pretty uh, tenuous. Oh, there's all sorts of interesting things could happen up here this turn uh, for the Germans if, if they have enough supply and all the rest of it. But what I was thinking was slightly grander vision uh, uh, to really uh, take advantage of... My maps are starting to come apart. Okay. <clears throat> Let's not do that. Uh, there's a big gap in the middle, right? I've got a couple of divisions here. Uh, one, two, I think. Yep. Uh, the 18th and 10th. But I also have uh, second in here, third motorized, 11th panzer, and the uh, Nanadasarak guys, and I think some other follow-up. We've got some, another division there. What if the German player were to isolate these forces, eliminate them, uh, bring some infantry up, because by then Bryant's could be gone, bring all that infantry up this way, up, the, up this highway, they can move super fast up here, uh, and keep, you know, a look like you're pushing this way, and start pressing, 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 and probing perhaps even across, across the Oka River, but hey, do a head fake and uh, pull two or three divisions and race south, capture Yilets, uh, Ronez, link up with these divisions here. I've got uh, the 4th Panzer, 17th Panzer, and a bunch of stuff around Kharkov. And by that time, I think Kharkov will be gone. And I'm talking, you know, I'm talking middle of December, end of December to do this. But link up come from Link up from here, come on down here, just clean sweep through all of this, do whatever we need to do and encircle or fight, and then press south and, and try and uh, uh, clean up this entire map section with the view that, and I guess we have to be careful, I've got to stay, uh, I've got to stay south of the Don River, otherwise it causes problems for uh, for the, the Germans in terms of replacement roles and the uh, level of the hedgehogs that can be built. So, uh, but sweep south and position ourselves for early 42 to try and uh, rapidly succeed at the, um, at the 1942 victory conditions. Uh, 
Now, I know it's not a, it's probably not an automatic victory type of thing, but if we could achieve those, there would be a high water mark, and I'd probably call it there, unless there's a huge amount of reinforcements coming that would give us a, an interesting Soviet counteroffensive, which I think there are. There's certainly, this is in, uh, in absentia of any... Uh, any Soviet reaction to any of those things that I'm talking about. Uh, but, but the Soviets, <clears throat> as I've been playing this, as the Soviet player with my Soviet player hat on, I've been frantically trying to protect Moscow and, and build this, uh, this uh, repair line here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to lose Kharkov. Uh, it's a hairball in the middle of the map there in those mountainous, that mountainous area. Sevastopol has not had any attention down the other end of the map. Uh, Germans have just no forces to do anything much about it. Uh, so the, the Soviets have not been reinforcing it very much other than slipping one or two SP in there per turn. And the same goes for Rostov, although Rostov is a little bit stronger. I've put a uh, fairly significant effort into uh, building uh, some hedgehogs down there. And, uh, and and having a line built there so that we'll have some sort of defense. In fact, I probably need to build some hedgehogs. Uh, now that I look at it down there, there's a fair bit of... Uh, all those units are supposed to be <laughs> to the left there. Uh, where are they? Those guys there, they're supposed to be all allocated, but they've been sitting there for two turns. And I really haven't worried too much about it because there's no way the Germans can get there just yet. Although that could potentially happen uh, in the next couple of turns. So we'll get them all cleaned up and sorted out and organized in uh, in moments to come. I guess probably this turn will be it. All right. Well, that was just an interesting little aside. I saw I saw this uh, potential opportunity. I don't know if that's strategically <laughs> worth it. Uh, it is a nice redirection of force uh, as as the as the the, the Soviets. Uh, consolidate and build defenses in the north we uh, redirect and head south and uh, try and uh, wipe out a huge portion of the soviet army number one and number two capture a lot of ground that would position us really well for the 1941 victory conditions unless we believe we could capture moscow uh before the end of the year and you know i I, I doubt it, well, although we're pretty close, but I doubt that we'll have the steam unless I was prepared to take horrible, horrible losses uh, to actually get in there and capture every hex of the city uh, and fight street to street. That would be uh, particularly bloody, I think, and, uh, and pretty messy to try and play. But anyway, regardless of that, we still wouldn't have captured Sevastopol, so uh, it wouldn't achieve the victory conditions for a 41 win. Uh, all right, enough rambling. That was just uh, some uh, some thoughts that uh, that this game generates those types uh, that type of thinking for me, and it's very very interesting, and it's a lot of fun uh, to do some what ifing and assessing of potential uh, actions that you can take and strategies or or, or, or actions that you can uh, conduct in a turn or series of turns. Okay, later. Here we go.